Thanks for watching and today I want to do something really really cool namely I want to derive the formulas for cosh and cinch from scratch so you know this e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 and in fact you may wonder where it comes from today I will explain it and by the way this is not my idea I would like to thank Alex Zorba for giving me the ideas for this it's just amazing. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I do. So, step one, let me give you some motivation. Because you may ask, how would we even go by defining cinch and cosh without the formula? Well, let's look back at polar coordinates. So, suppose you have the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals to 1. So the circle has radius 1. And suppose you have the point x naught, y naught. Why not? Okay. That. What does Polar say? Polar says that basically x naught equals to cosine of theta and y naught equals to sine of theta. That is one way of looking at it. Now, instead of doing that, let's look at it in terms of areas. So suppose this angle is theta, and look at the area of that sector. Suppose this is S. Then the nice thing, areas are proportional. So to find the area of S, let's see, so what is theta? Oh, this theta, baby, don't polar me, don't polar me, no more. Anyway, so what is theta? The important thing is, the full circle corresponds to an angle of 2 pi, and the area of a full circle, it's pi 1 squared, which is just pi. So in particular, if you have an angle theta, then you get the sector S, but because it's proportional, what this means is that s is theta times pi over 2 pi. And that's theta over 2. So in other words, this area is just theta over 2. In particular, what is theta? Theta becomes 2 times the area of s which you can also think as the area of like twice the sector, namely going from minus theta to theta. So in other words, the area of the whole shebang equals to theta. So we can define theta in two ways. First of all, with polar coordinates as a typical angle, but you can also think of it as a number that makes this area equal to theta. And in fact, this is the idea that we'll use for uh, caution cinch. Okay. Now, polar coordinates are good for circles. Hyperbolic cosine and sine, you may guess it's good for hyperbolas. So now, let's deal with the world of hyperbolas. So, step two. Suppose you have the unit hyperbola x squared plus y squared, sorry, x squared minus y squared equals to 1. Looks like that. And it intercepts at 1, if you'd like. And suppose you have a point x naught, y naught. Now the question is, what is the analog of theta? In this case, we have a parameter, alpha. So let's write x naught, y naught in terms of alpha. And what is alpha? Again, think of it in terms of areas. Define alpha as a number such that the area of this region is alpha over 2. So, very, very important. 
define alpha such that, if you like, the area of this sector equals to alpha over 2. So important, alpha isn't an angle anymore. It's just some number such that the area here, let's call it AR, equals to alpha over 2. Or if you'd like, the area of this whole hyperbolic region equals to alpha. So one important thing, so AR as area of the region is alpha over 2. And the goal is, and remember this because things will get a bit messy, we want to write x and y in terms of alpha. Or in other words, we want to write the original points, x naught and y naught, in terms of alpha. Just like in polar coordinates, we had x naught, y naught equals to cosine theta, sine theta. Now we want to get similar formulas in terms of um, alpha. And those formulas will be caution sage. Sorry, spoiler alert, but <laughs> I hope you guessed that already. And now in this step, we would like to analyze the hyperbola and uh, you know, all the areas of the hyperbola in a more uh, uh, precise way. So. Remember what our setup was. We had our hyperbola here. x squared minus y squared equals to 1. We had a point x naught, y naught. And again, here the base is x naught and the height is y naught. And we had our little sector, which connects the point 0, which connects the origin with the point x naught y naught, so this is supposed to be a straight line. And notice here we have two different regions. On the one hand, we have our um, region that we called AR. And we knew by definition again, the area of that region is alpha over 2. Again, that is how we define alpha. On the other hand, we have this region under this hyperbola, which we'll call AH. A H as in hyperbola. And, and notice what's nice about this. If you sum up those two regions, you indeed get the area of this triangle. So, in particular, in particular what we get, we get AR, Again, the area of a region plus AH equal, equals to the area of this triangle. The area of the triangle, notice it's not too hard to find. The base is X naught, the height is Y naught. So the area becomes one half times base times height. So it becomes one half X naught Y naught. By the way, uh, we can write y naught in terms of x naught using the hyperbola because notice we get y squared equals to x squared minus 1. So put the 1 here, the y squared over here. And then y, in this case we get positive, equals to square root of x squared minus 1. So in particular, the point y naught, which is on the hyperbola, satisfies y naught, y naught, equals to x naught squared minus 1. And therefore, we can simplify this a little bit. That becomes 1 half x naught square root of x naught squared minus 1. And again, the point is, once we found x naught, we'll be done because then y naught just follows from that formula. Okay, that gives you the area of the triangle. The area of our region, I'd like to remind you, is alpha over 2. So in particular, the area of this hyperbola is the area of the triangle minus the area of the region 
which is 1 half x naught square root of x naught squared minus 1 minus alpha over t. That is only one half. And basically, the crux of this video is just to find another way of calculating the area under the hyperbola. And here's a cool thing. The hyperbola is a graph of a function, so AH is just the area under this graph, which will be given by, drum roll, an integral. So, In this case, what is the h? I think I believe it's step four. But a h again, you have our point x naught. It starts at one, and then you have our hyperbola square root of x squared minus one. So AH is just given by the integral from 1 to x naught of square root of x squared minus 1 dx. Now, in a previous video, I've already calculated this integral, but because it's so much fun, let's do it again. So, we want some identity which says something squared minus 1 equals to something else squared. Turns out secant satisfies this identity. identity. So let x be secant of theta, then square root of x squared minus 1. It's square root of secant squared minus 1. That becomes square root of tangent squared. And by the choice of theta and stuff, this, will, this is positive. So this becomes tangent of theta. Next thing, how about let's do the endpoints. So what angle theta gives us x equals to 1? Well, secant theta equals to 1. Secant is 1 over cosine. So cosine theta equals to 1. And therefore, theta equals to 0. Next, what angle theta gives us? Secant theta equals to x naught. Well, nothing more else than arc secant x naught. And uh, you can write it in terms of arc cosine or something, but uh, we'll simplify this at the end. Anyway, and then the next step is calculate dx. So dx. Again, the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So secant theta, tangent theta. I like to think of it as the derivative of sexy is sexy tangy. So that works. And therefore, what do we get? AH just simplifies to the following. You put your new endpoints. So zero and arc secant of x naught. Square root of x squared minus 1 becomes tangent of theta. And then secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. And uh, what do I want to say? So uh, you can also write this as integral from 0 to arc secant of x naught of tangent squared theta, secant theta, d theta. And remember this because there will be a little miracle happening. So this is one way of writing this. But also notice secant theta tangent theta, well, that's just the derivative of secant. And tangent is easy to differentiate. So basically what we want to do Want to have some fun and integrate by parts. Right. Integrate by integration by parts is fun. Oh, 
okay, well, u dv, and then the integral becomes u v minus v du. So essentially what we get is tangent theta, secant theta from zero to arc secant x naught minus v du, so integral from zero to arc secant x naught of secant squared secant theta v theta. Okay, let's evaluate that. So uh, tangent of arc secant of x naught times secant of arc secant of x naught, which be just becomes x naught by definition of the inverse function, minus tangent of zero, which is zero, and minus integral from zero to arc secant of x naught. And the secant squared, well, this integral becomes secant cubed, which is a bit hard to evaluate, but remember, secant and tangent, they go very well together. So in fact, let's write secant squared as one plus tangent squared. One plus tangent squared theta, secant theta d theta. We'll take care of this in a second. This one, we can simplify using the triangle method. So what is arc secant of x naught? It's an angle which made secant equals to x naught, and secant is just hypotenuse over adjacent. So you want hypotenuse over adjacent to be x naught. For example, this triangle works, x naught and one. And once you have that by the Pythagorean theorem, this side becomes x naught squared minus one, and then tangent is just opposite over adjacent, so tangent of this becomes square root of x naught squared minus one. Good, let's continue. So we get minus integral from zero to arc secant of x naught, secant of theta, d theta, and let's continue again, integral from zero to arc secant of x naught, tangent squared theta, secant of theta d theta. Man, doesn't this look familiar? Well, indeed, notice we started with ah, we said ah equals to this integral, and we'll see this integral again, which means that in the end, we'll be able to solve for ah. We'll do this in a second. Let's just finish evaluating the integral. Point is, it's like this integral of e to the x cosine of x, where you do it twice, and then you get an equation for the integral. Here we have the same thing. So, square root of x naught squared minus one. So, integral of secant is ln of sexy plus tan g, so ln of a secant theta plus tangent theta. And that's from zero to arc secant of x naught minus a h, and that becomes, um, oh, I forgot the x naught, yeah. We have this, we multiply by x naught, sorry about that. So this. And then, so you evaluate that, so square root of x naught squared minus one times x naught minus ln of secant of arc secant, which just becomes x naught, plus tangent of arc secant, which was evaluated here to be square root of x naught squared minus one. 
absolute value, but the nice thing is everything's positive, so we can actually remove the absolute value. Good. What about zero? Well, tangent of zero is zero, secant of zero is one, but ln of one is zero. So in fact, the zero part disappears, and you're just left with minus ah. And remember, what was this equal to? All this gibberish is just equal to ah, which means we get an equation for ah, which means ah plus ah equals to this junk, so 2ah equals to this. So indeed, ah is 1 half times x naught square root of x naught squared minus 1 minus ln of x naught plus square root of x naught squared minus 1. Very, very nice. That was the end of the integration part. And now remember what we want to do. I also almost forgot, but we want to go back to our other characterization of AH. Because remember, AH was just uh, the area of the triangle minus the area of the sector. Step five. So recall, from step three, we got AH equals to one half x naught square root of x naught squared minus one minus alpha over two. And again, that was one half x times y minus the area of the sector. And now, using this formula, what we also have is 1 half x naught square root of x naught squared minus 1 minus 1 half ln of x naught plus square root of x naught squared minus 1 equals to this thing, 1 half x naught square root of x naught squared minus 1 minus alpha over 2. And here comes maybe the most exciting part of today's video. Those weird terms here, they actually cancel out. Not only that, the minus 1 halves cancel out. And in the end, you have alpha equals to ln of x naught plus square root of x naught squared minus 1. which expresses your parameter alpha in terms of x naught, y naught. It's the equivalent of saying theta is arctangent of y over x. We want the opposite. Now we want uh, to write x naught in terms of alpha. And in fact, let's do that. And hopefully we'll get formulas that are more familiar. So the last step. And again, remember, we want to solve x naught in terms of alpha. Similar for y naught. So let's take this expression, exponentiate. So x naught plus square root of x naught squared minus 1 equals to e to the alpha. Let's try to get rid of that square root. So square root of x naught squared minus 1 equals to e to the alpha minus x naught. Let's square this junk. So x naught squared minus 1 equals to e to the alpha minus x naught squared. This one, let's just expand it out. So x naught squared minus 1 equals to e to the 2 alpha minus 2 x naught e to the alpha plus x naught squared. 
It's a quadratic equation, but the quadratic factors cancel out. And therefore, you're left with 2 x naught e to the alpha equals to e to the 2 alpha plus 1. Almost there. Let's just solve for x naught. It's a nice thing. There's, we don't even need the quadratic formula for this. It's that elegant. So, uh, 2x naught equals to e to the 2 alpha plus 1 over e to the alpha, which becomes, so e to the 2 alpha over e to the alpha, which is e to the alpha, 1 over e to the alpha, which is e to the negative alpha. So 2x naught equals to this. So x naught, lo and behold, is e to the alpha plus e to the minus alpha over 2, which we'll call, oh my gosh, so that's cosh of alpha. And you may wonder, what about y naught? Remember, y naught, it's given by square root of x naught squared minus 1, and that's square root of e to the alpha plus e to the minus alpha over 2 squared minus 1. Okay, let's expand that out. So e to the 2 alpha plus 2 times this times this, e to the alpha times e to the minus alpha is just 1. So plus 2 plus e to the minus 2 alpha over 4. And then minus 1, which is minus 4 over 4. And it's very pretty because we get e to the, the, the 1 over 4 comes out of the square root to get 1 half. And then we get e to the 2 alpha min, minus 2 plus e to the minus 2 alpha. And it turns out this is a square because it's e to the alpha squared minus 2 e to the alpha e to the negative alpha plus e to the negative alpha squared. And that just becomes 1 half times square root of e to the alpha minus e to the negative alpha squared. And turns out this is always positive. So we get 1 half e to the alpha minus e to the minus alpha. And therefore, why not is e to the alpha minus e to the minus alpha over 2, and you can recognize this as cinch of alpha. Whoa! So now you know where cosh and cinch come from. So it's really, really neat. There's a reason they're called hyperbolic functions. It's because it's the point on the hyperbola such that the area of that sector is alpha over 2. How cool is that? And I didn't know about this, but thank you so much, Alex Zorba, for providing me with this. And if you love this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.